Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Dubbed Canada's best summer job, Hip Camp held a competition with the opportunity for adventurers to take part in a cross Canada camping trip, and a Lloydminster native has been selected as one of the winners. We would love to continue and inspire others to go out and have an adventure. Which is why we are the best candidates for Hip Camp's best summer job ever. Brody Younger is from Lloydminster and her and her boyfriend Andrew Santos from Vancouver beat out 50 candidates to win the national competition and $20,000 prize. Hip Camp announced two months ago that they will begin offering their services in Canada. The world's largest uh, resource for finding unique outdoor stays those stays can range from land for campsites, which you can like bring your tent or your RV on, to uh, cabins, yurts, tree houses, things like that. The couple does a lot of camping around BC, and before submitting their pitch video to Hip Camp's national contest, they originally reached out to the company regarding other work. I've loved filming my experience. So um, we actually found out about Hip Camp when we were looking for uh, companies to work with and we saw they were looking for photographers and we're like oh they don't have anything out for videographers so why don't we pitch to them and then a week later they come out with hip camp's best summer job ever <laughs> their adventure started on the 9th and the trip will run for 40 days where they will visit 20 different hip camp sites across the country and they will be creating content throughout their journey we were actually mountain biking at the time, going up on a truck up a mountain. Brody was tearing up. <laughs> and uh, I was just excited to get to do this for the rest of the summer. We'll also be cross-promoting on Hip Camp and Hip Camp Canada's Instagram platforms. And then afterwards, uh, they'll be doing some like blogs through Hip Camp and Andrew's personal YouTube channel as well. Younger also encourages people in the Lloydminster area to check out Hip Camp and see if they can get their own sites registered. If you would like to follow their journey, visit Brody and Andrew's Instagram as well as Hip Camp Canada's page. A local organization is confident about the business community in the region as they've helped distribute federal grant money. Jace Mackey has more. I'm joined today here on Primetime Local News with Corrine McGurr. She is the uh, General Manager of Community Futures Lloydminster and Region. Now, Community Futures is boasting uh, some positive numbers from 2020 into 2021. But before we talk about some of those statistics, Corrine, can you just tell me a little bit about what uh, Community Futures Lloydminster and Region is? Community Futures is a program, uh, grassroots based, and we're here to help businesses and entrepreneurs grow, uh, expand, diversify, uh, and, and be sustainable over the long period. So we are here uh, to do uh, business supports as well as community economic development. And now uh, Community Futures, you guys are uh, boasting about a successful 2020-2021 and a $3.4 million was distributed to some local businesses. Can you just tell me a little bit more about that? You bet. It was our uh, single most uh, highest amount of dollars invested in our region. Uh, since we started over 30 years ago. And a, a big part of that was our regional relief and recovery fund that we dispersed on behalf of the federal government uh, during the COVID pandemic. So uh, lots of the, the funding were, were uh, relief uh, oriented just to help businesses uh, survive the, um, the wildest year we've ever experienced. And a lot of this funding helped uh, create or even maintain jobs here locally in the region. Yes, it certainly did. And that was a key metric that we were wanting to, to monitor was it's great to have the dollar invested, but what does that actually mean for, for, our, for our people and our, our communities? And so uh, over the past year, over 180 jobs were either created or maintained uh, through those business loans, which is absolutely critical to to our economic success as community. And then beyond just uh, dollars and grants going to businesses, uh, Community Futures also runs different training programs and things like that? Yeah, we sure do. We uh, uh, have a great entrepreneurial ecosystem here in our region. And so we work really closely with, you know, our partners like Alberta Innovates and Startup Lloydminster and the Chamber of Commerces. Um, and, you know, we're all working together to make sure that businesses here have the same information 
that uh, anybody else operating anywhere would also have. So a key part of that are our, cha our um, training sessions, lunch and learns, webinars, whatever we can do to get people connected and networking uh, with other businesses, entrepreneurs, and most importantly, resources. And now another big project is uh, Project Gazelle that goes towards supporting uh, female entrepreneurs. Can you just tell me a little bit more about how successful that was? Yeah, absolutely. We are in our uh, about two and a half years into Project Gazelle. So we have another year and a half of programming left. And so this was a, a separate federal grant that we received uh, to specifically promote uh, women entrepreneurs across uh, Northern Alberta and Northwest Saskatchewan. So we're we're proud that the the project is based here. It's the largest uh, bi provincial project on the federal government's uh, list of projects through the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy. And so you know, so far to date, we've had almost 1,200 women across the the greater region uh, take take steps towards entrepreneurship as an option. And particularly during COVID, it, it was absolutely essential that. Uh, uh, females and um, single moms and partners were all hustling and trying to do what they could to survive this past year. And so we found a lot of great creative and innovative entrepreneurs looking to to start their businesses. Now, you mentioned earlier that a lot, the reason that you guys were able to distribute so much money from the federal government, a lot of this money was uh, to support recovery during the pandemic and stuff. So going forward, what's the kind of the outlook for local businesses here in the area? You know, what? Uh, one of the great things uh, about tough times is that we, we learn really quickly how resilient we are and, and how much, um, how much creativity and innovation is in our in our community as our basic metrics uh, are, we have you know some basic metrics each year that we need to you know promote businesses and give out loans and so already in the first quarter of our year we've already met our entire metrics for the year so the downtimes bring out the entrepreneurs and they're they're ready to uh, to get started. They've spent the last year planning, uh, getting their businesses rolling. And so, you know, already we've had um, people purchasing existing businesses. And that's a huge part of what community economic development is about, is to not lose those existing businesses. And so that succession to a new owner is absolutely critical uh, for the economy. And so we, we're seeing that, we're seeing lots of startups. Um, and a variety. I, I don't, we've processed almost eight loans already in the first quarter. And it's every single industry you think of. There's, it's all over the place that people are, are looking to grow and, and take on the challenge of entrepreneurship. Awesome, Corinne. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking some time to talk with me. It was great to hear everything that's going on at uh, Community Features. The Lloydminster Runners are set to hold their first in-person marathon in over a year with the Titanium Half Marathon. Connor Chan has more. Chris Bogue with the Lloydminster Runners joins us today here on Primetime Local News. We're previewing the upcoming 2021 Titanium Half Marathon, which is coming up this weekend. Uh, Chris, give us some details on what people can expect from this year's marathon. So yeah, so this year is, uh, it's, it's going to be great. Um, we're really excited about it. We're calling this year kind of a little bit of a relaunch year. Uh, last year, we had to do our races virtually. And uh, it wasn't as great as in person races. So we're really excited to have people back racing in person again. What's the excitement level been like for the members as they finally get to actually do an in person run this year? Yeah, everybody, everybody is super excited. Uh, the running community is really, really strong in Lloydminster. Uh, it's great to have everybody out uh, back running again. And, uh, and it's great to be running with friends and, and the community. Now, how many runners are you anticipating for the weekend here? Uh, we're expecting just around over 200. Uh, it's about comparable to our first year as well. Uh, being our relaunch year, we were kind of expecting right around those numbers. So we're expecting about just right around that 200 people. Now, for those that are watching and may not know about the Lloydminster Runners or this is their first time hearing about the club, give us a little bit of background on it. And for those that may want to not only know more, but also thinking about joining as well. Sure. Uh, anybody and everybody. Uh, we try to get uh, people moving uh, any way possible. We started Lloydminster Runners about four years ago, uh, and it was just a small little running group. Uh, and then we said, well, why isn't there any racism, Lloyd? So we, uh, we try to put on that 
uh, so people can have something to look forward to. We also do the uh, Couch to 5K every spring. Uh, we'll uh, get moving again, whether you're a, 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 a once seasoned runner or uh, straight off the couch. Um, we, uh, we take in people, um, train them how to run five kilometers or get them ready to run five kilometers. That usually aligns with our races. Uh, so they have a little bit of a challenge at the at the end of it. So absolutely anybody uh, can be uh, can be a runner. And lastly, what are some of the event details coming up for the marathon as well as can people still register if they want to? Yeah, definitely. So we're uh, taking registrations up until Wednesday. Package pickup is uh, Friday, I think four o'clock at uh, Go To Athletics here in Lloydminster is where we're doing our Friday uh, pickup. Uh, after that, our pickup times is, uh, I think it's 730 in the park at the picnic area is where uh, the other package pickup can be made. So that's, uh, that's kind of our timeline there. Chris, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully lots of people register and hopefully you see a big turnout this weekend. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, no problem. Thank you very much. Now Connor Chan will take a first look at your evening forecast. All right, thanks very much, Jasmine. Right now, we're still seeing a little bit of cloud coverage. Lots of wind today, though, with uh, high around that 20 to 23 range as we're seeing the wind definitely being a major factor today. As you can see, over 40 kilometers an hour coming in from the west and northwest areas. And for those that are going to do that, Lloydminster Runners uh, Titanium Half Marathon, make sure you stay very hydrated as we'll talk about what to expect heading up uh, this weekend later on eventually into weather. And we see lots of 21s and low 20s in other areas here. Uh, 21 in Vermilion, Marwayne, Wainwright, and St. Paul, 22 degrees out in Edmonton and in Vegreville. Also seeing lots of heavy wind in those parts of Alberta as well. A little bit of rain making its way through northern parts of Saskatchewan like in the Green Lake, Meadow Lake area sitting at 18 and 19 degrees. 21 in Maidstone and then 22 in North Battleford. And, and take a look to that satellite radar map. You can see here that system making its way just passing through the Meadow Lake area. Should clear up around that 637 degree range and then make its way continuing on eastbound into areas into Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. And then for us here we'll probably see a little bit of cloud coverage there, maybe a little bit of a uh, little bit of extra showers coming in from just that little small system that's making its way through uh, Edmonton. You can see on that left hand side of your screen as little parts of the green are making their way uh, eastbound and looking overnight North Battleford 11 degrees with some cloud coverage. We'll still see around low 20 days for tomorrow at 20 degrees and then 13 overnight in Cold Lake. We could see some rain expected for overnight carrying that over into tomorrow. We'll still see some winds continuing to pick up in that 30 kilometer an hour range and then for us here in Lloydminster we should see uh, 13 overnight with some clouds and then 20 as well for tomorrow and we'll still see uh, some winds definitely picking up dropping only 10 kilometers an hour it looks like for tomorrow and looking ahead to the next three days as we are going to get a little bit warmer throughout the week here so 23 on Thursday and as we get into Friday we're going to start to see temperatures possibly get as high as 36 degrees on Saturday so that is quite a big jump from what we saw over from yesterday today and then going into Saturday so 30 degrees expected for Friday with clear skies, and that should be the same heading into the weekend. That is a look at your weather for now. We'll have more primetime local news after the break. Welcome back. Food and Farm Care Saskatchewan is looking for nominees for their champion award. The award is given to an individual who goes the extra mile to help consumers learn more about the agricultural industry. Jillian Code has the details. Today I'm joined by Clinton Monchuk. He's the Executive Director for Food and Farm Care Saskatchewan. So Clinton, you guys are running a competition to find an egg advocate. What can you tell me about this competition? So it's, it's an award that we give out to those who are involved in trying to either educate or um, build trust uh, in food and farming here in Saskatchewan. So um, really it is something to kind of show pride in the industry. So uh, we developed this war award back in 2016. Uh, so it's been going for, uh, now this will be the fifth year that, that we're doing this. And, and what we're trying to do is just showcase a lot of the good things that are happening here in the province and, and encourage others to uh, be a part of, of building trust. And we have a variety of, of winners of, of in the past. And, and I think it just, it solidifies how we need to get out there, be more proactive in, in talking to consumers about food and farming and, and the practices that we do. 
And I think a lot more people in the egg industry are using things like social media to show people what's going on behind the scenes. So is that the type of person you guys are looking for for this award? Really, yes, it would, it would be that. And, and the, the scope is pretty broad, broad. So yes, it would be people who are on social media or people who are having farm tours on their farm or talking with classrooms about what they're doing. Um, and it's also on the other side. So it'd be the research, the academic. Um, we really want to be inclusive of anybody who's in the industry just to make sure that if, if people are doing good uh, for the industry that we actually capture some of that. So we, we do have past uh, doctors, veterinarians, uh, who have won the awards. But in the last few years, yes, it, it's been primarily those who are very active on social media, telling the story of their grain farms or their poultry operations or cattle ranches, um, and, and really trying to get out to the public to engage with them and, and offer them up what they're doing on their own farm. And, and anyone from any type of farm can be nominated for this. 100%. And I would encourage anybody who's listening right now, if you know of anybody um, who is uh, that individual. And again, it could be somebody who's going into classrooms or giving tours or very active on social media promoting what they're doing on their own farms or ranches to nominate them. It, it, it takes probably about 10 minutes and the, the nomination form is on our website. So if you go to farmfoodcaresk.org um, and under the events and programs uh, link, you can have a drop down menu that shows the champion award. It's a fillable PDF um, form that you can use uh, to nominate somebody. And really, it, it showcases, um, again, what they're doing and, and tries to, to get others encouraged to do more as well. In the past years, we've had numerous different nominations. Uh, this year, uh, we actually, as of right now, our nominations are, are zero. So... Uh, we don't have any nominations yet, so it'd be great to have some some individuals from the Lloyd Minster area put in their their applications um, and see what happens. And you said there's only about a month and a half before the September 30th deadline. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And 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 I think right now, like if the, if there's a, a day where it's hopefully raining or or anything where where people have a little bit more time, just you know, just recognize somebody that you know, it could be somebody from your community, somebody in your family, whoever it is, um, you know, put forward a nomination and, and it goes through our adjudication process. And, and we have three judges that look at all the applications and, and kind of rank them uh, based on the nominations. So again, if you, you take the time to do it, uh, it, it really helps, um, you know, build and, and promote those who are doing good things in our industry to uh, talk to consumers. Yeah. And, and producers have had, you know, a really, really tough year. Mother nature hasn't been too kind to a lot of people. So I'm sure a lot of, of people in the egg industry would really, really appreciate being nominated for this. Like knowing that someone's, someone's thinking of them. Exactly. It, it, and, and you, you hit the nail right on the head with that one. It, it really has been a tough uh, year for farmers right across Saskatchewan and really throughout the, the Western provinces this year with the drought um, a lot of hardship, a lot of difficult situations, I think, uh, that farmers and ranchers are in this year. Um, so to, to actually reach out and, and nominate somebody who is um, still doing some, some notable work within the industry, I think would be excellent. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. Awesome. Well, you take care. Enjoy the rest of your summer too. Now we'll take a look at your egg prices. This past weekend, teams from around Saskatchewan gathered for the Senior AA Baseball Provincials. Evan Kenny has more on the results and a look at the NSRBL Finals. For the majority of senior baseball teams across Saskatchewan, the 2021 season has wrapped up following Provincials this past weekend. The North Saskatchewan River Baseball League was well represented with multiple teams in each tournament. Ahead of Provincials, NSRBL co-commissioner Kelvin Collier had this to say. Um, we've got five of those uh, teams playing in the senior in North Battleford. I think we have two teams that are going down to Davidson and one going to Beachy. So 
yeah, we should have good representation throughout the province. Hopefully, uh, they come away with uh, um, you know some uh, some championships. I know the uh, the NSRBL is really well thought up throughout the, uh, the province, and we tend to uh, take home our share of hardware when it comes to provincials. So. And the teams of Northwest Saskatchewan did just that. The Wilkie Brewers walked away with the Tier 2 championship. The Macklin Lakers beat the Unity Junior Cardinals in the Tier 3 championship. And the Meadow Lake Sox captured the Tier 4 championship. Now, two teams remain in the battle for NSRBL champ. The Kindersley Stallions will head to Standard Hill to take on the Lakers. So we'll break for that, make sure that teams have enough, uh, enough time to to rest their pitching prior to the, the provincials and then uh, two or three days after to the rest and make sure that they're ready to go to provide a, a good final for, um, for the league. So. The Lakers will be led by the league's top batter, Brock Harrison, and dual threat, Cooper Olsen, while the Kindersley Stallions will be led by team MVP, Dylan Flash. Game one kicks off Wednesday night. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. Now, Connor and Chan will take another look at your weather forecast. All right, thanks very much, Jasmine. Yes, uh, with having Kenny being out at the Baseball Diamonds, definitely just shows how windy it did get today, and we could see that possibly into tomorrow. We saw those wind gusts get close to 50 kilometers an hour, so pretty windy to say the least. Is a little bit more of a, an understatement at this point, but 22 still for us here in Lloydminster, 19 in Rocky Mountain House, 23 degrees in Edmonton with 20 in Edson, Whitecourt, and in Jasper, 22 for Saskatoon, and 21 degrees also in the North Battleford and Melford areas, 15 also in Prince Albert. Looking up to the northern areas, a little bit cooler today as we see temperatures in that uh, 15 and uh, 10 to uh, 10 to 15 degree range or 10 to 19 degree range. If we want to go into those numbers there, 15 though, Lalosh, Buffalo Narrows, nonetheless, as well as in Flin Flon, 13 in Walston Lake, 16 up in the Uranium City, Stony Rapids. They did see a little bit of those showers that came from those Meadow Lake areas earlier on into the day. Uh, looking at Peace River and Grand Prairie High Level, both sitting at all three sitting at 19 degrees, 20 degrees in Slave Lake, and then 16 in Fort McMurray. Now looking down to Southern Alberta, also still pretty mild today. 23 in Lethbridge with 20 in Medicine Hat, 18 degrees for Calgary, and then 14 in Swift Current with 17 in Moose Jaw today. Uh, Regina City at 16 degrees with 20 all the way for Estevan and 19 uh, in Kindersley areas. Now looking ahead across the rest of the country, a little bit warmer in some areas like Winnipeg at 24 degrees, 26 in Toronto, tw uh, 30 degrees in the Winnipeg, uh, not, Win not Winnipeg, Quebec City area, <laughs> excuse me, 16 in St. John's, 22 in Halifax. And then Vancouver also sitting in those mild 23 degree temperatures. Same with Edmonton, of course, seeing a little bit more cloud coverage as well uh, as we are so going to start to see things clear up for the prairies as we are going to see a very, very hot weekend ahead of us here. 14 degrees up in Yellowknife and uh, 18 all the way in Whitehorse. Now looking to tomorrow, we are going to see wind gusts continue to still be around that 30 to 40 kilometer an hour range. So the wind probably isn't going to go away anytime soon. We are still going to see a little bit cooler temperatures throughout the day. So 20 is what we're expecting for tomorrow along with the main. Stone, St. Walberg, uh, Marwayne, and St. Paul areas. Bonneville, Colt Lake sitting at 19 degrees for those areas. 22 in Edmonton as well as in Macklin. 24 degrees for Provost as well as 20 in North Battleford for tomorrow. And then 18, we'll see that up in uh, Green Lake as well. Now here's a look at the next seven days. So 23 degrees on Thursday. As we get into Friday, things are going to start to get really hot at 30 degrees. And then if you're going out for that run on uh, put on by the Lloydminster Runners on Saturday, 35 degrees will be your day time high so make sure if you are going out to run stay hydrated and stay cool as best as you can uh, for all those that are doing the half marathon 33 degrees on Sunday and then things will start to go back to normal on Monday as we'll have a little bit of sun and cloud mixes on uh, Monday and then Tuesday we'll have a little bit more cloud coverage with uh, high, a little bit lower temperatures at 22 degrees as our high as we look at our averages normally 22 is the high we see for August and then 10 is the low for the month of August. That is a look at your weather for now. We'll have more primetime local news after the break. Welcome back everybody. We're joined once again with Becca Lawrence from the Lloydminster and Community SPCA. Becca, I hear you guys are really busy over there this week. We are, yes, full, full, full of cats. <laughs> yes, and so that is the hot topic of the week is cats and kittens. You guys are 
rightful. I know you guys sent out, you know, kind of an all points bulletin on the Instagram. Mm -hmm. You were showing pictures of all the cats and there are a lot of them. So let's just chat a little bit yes. about that, Becca. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it's just it's that time of year. Kittens are coming in like crazy. Um, between cats here in the shelter and in foster, we're sitting at about 110 cats total in care. Uh, so I mean, really, right now, we just have a handful of cats that are out in foster or kittens and cats with their mums uh, out in foster right now. Uh, so vast majority of them are right here in the shelter. Uh, so basically, uh, some people might remember, but last year we did a name your price cat event. Um, so we are doing that again this year where we have our cats, our kittens, and also our two longtime resident rabbits. They're also in a part of that as well. They are a bonded pair, so they do have to go together, but, uh, but yeah, so we are, we're going to have an adoption event and from today until Saturday. So hopefully we find homes for all of our kitties. <laughs> Yeah, so anybody out there, if you've been waiting, you know, you're looking for the right cat, looking for the right kitten, obviously now is the time because there is so many options. I know I was yeah. flipping through the Instagram and you guys have so many cute <laughs> cats who are looking for homes and, you know, it's just, you, you love to see it for people who need a cat, you hate to see it for the SPCA who right now is, yeah. you know, so full, it makes operations that much more difficult. But obviously yes. you mentioned that you guys have a name your own price event, which has always been yes. a hit for you guys, you guys have done it before, <laughs> and so that obviously, I don't think it needs much explaining, but why don't we just let the people yeah. know what that means anyways. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So name your price is basically you can pick your own adoption fee. So we, we have a cap at about $20. That's as low as you can go. But, uh, but yeah, so you can really, if you want to come in and you want to pay the full price, that's amazing. If you want to come in and get a deal, you pick your deal. So it, it's really, we're just, uh, we're just looking at getting these cats into some homes and, 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 and like, like, you know what, everybody loves a good deal. Um, so if you, if you are ready for that cat, we have cats down at PetSmart. We have one at Puppy Love. Uh, he's quite a cute boy. His name's Pineapple. <laughs> and then we'll have some at Pet Value as well. And, uh, yeah, so basically in that sense, we have them kind of separated everywhere. So if you do want to go to those locations to check out what we have, it's majority of the kittens that are there. And then, uh, here it's, you know, about half and half of adults and cats as well. There you go, everybody. So there's like, there's so many options for you to pick from, obviously. <laughs> go ahead and stop by Pet Value, stop by the SPCA, say hi. Uh, and why don't we, uh, why don't we talk to this guy here? Who's that? Yeah. This one is Sahara. So she came in with two babies who are also uh, available for adoption. And uh, they are going to be hanging out at Pet Value. This little one here is Orchid. She's quite, quite cute. <laughs> and then this little one over here is Lacey. She's a bit of a spitfire, this one. So if you're interested in Lacey, you got to be ready for some adventure. <laughs> but yeah, we got tons. We got our little Weasley boys here. Some of them have extra toes. And then, yeah, like basically everyone, some are having naps. This is Rough and Tumble. They'll be going to hang out at PetSmart. Yeah, we got we got tons. We got the uh, where is she? Just snoozing. We got some snoozers right now, but <laughs> but yeah, basically everybody in our shelter is ready to go. I think there's only a handful of kitties that are not spayed and neutered yet, but we will try and get them ready to go before the end of the week so that everybody has that opportunity to get adopted. Exactly. And this is a really good opportunity, you know, if you've been looking for a specific, you know, kind of cat, if you've been looking for, you know, perhaps you want a cat that just sleeps all day like this little guy that we got here, <laughs> you know, today or this week is the perfect opportunity for you to stop in and, you know, get to meet some of these guys, get to meet their personalities, <laughs> find one that really fits with you and, you know, give it a good home. There are so many options right now. Obviously, the SPCA is, is full to the brim with cats right now. So you really, literally have your pick of the litter. So anybody, please, if you've been interested in a cat, stop in, say hi, you know, get to meet the cats. And, you know, perhaps if uh, you've been waiting for a little while because 
you know, maybe maybe the adoption fees are just a little bit out of your budget. You know, yeah. this is a this is a good opportunity for you to you know go in, adopt a cat, save that money for other cat related things. You know, set yes. it aside for vet bills or or you know to buy the supplies that you need for it to take care of it. Well, that's unfortunately all the time we have today, Becca. But I really want to thank you for stopping by. <laughs> thank you to all the cats who said hi today. And once again, anybody out there who's looking for a kitty or a cat, this is the time. You know, swing by, help out the SPCA, bring yourself home, a fuzzy little friend, and everybody's <laughs> a winner. So, Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> Thank you. We'll speak with you again next week, Becca. Manage your waste and recyclables with Quick Pick Waste Disposal. 100% locally owned and proud to serve and support the communities we call home. Quick Pick, the convenient solution to avoid pollution. I'm speaking with Brian Geislinger, the Vice President with Alberta Blue Cross. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, there's a new Keeping Well resource that will be supporting Alberta seniors coming out of the pandemic. Why has Alberta Blue Cross decided this was important to do this right now? Thanks, Shelby. Well, as, as you likely aware, there's almost 700,000 seniors in Alberta. And over the last 17 months during the pandemic, seniors have had a particularly hard time coping through the pandemic. There's been... Uh, a lot of isolation, a lot of seniors have been in quarantine, and resulting from that is something called deconditioning, which is uh, resulting from seniors' loss of access to exercise, activity, socialization, interaction with their peers, and deconditioning is essentially the loss of physical, mental, and emotional health, and it's taken a big toll on seniors. So and, and actually, you know, my parents are in the early 80s, and I've seen this firsthand with my own parents, and, and the difficult time that seniors have had living under the cloud of COVID-19 for over a year now. So we had the opportunity to work with the Alberta Injury Prevention Center on this new resource called Keeping Well. And it's Keeping Well is essentially a guide and a resource, really practical to help seniors re-engage post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. And could you expand a bit on who Alberta Blue Cross partnered up with to support this resource? Sure, the Alberta Injury Prevention Center is a long-term partner of Alberta Blue Cross, and we've worked with the Injury Prevention Center on a number of initiatives. One of their key initiatives is called Finding Balance, and it's a senior's fall prevention campaign, and, and falls are a leading cause of hospitalization and injury for seniors. So building on that, we uh, had the opportunity to work with Finding Balance and with the Injury Prevention Center on this larger initiative, and the resource contains a lot of useful information, not only on preventing falls for seniors, but on mental health, on healthy eating, on a real wide variety of topics, even preventing frauds and scams. So the Keeping Well resource just really looks holistically at seniors' wellness and provides a lot of useful, practical information for them. Now, what's all involved in the Keeping Well resource exactly that seniors can expect to see? Sure. So it's, uh, it's a 32-page booklet. And it's available free of charge to seniors. So it's going to be available from a lot of seniors organizations across the province. We're just currently sending out copies now and, and the Injury Prevention Center is coordinating that on their end. So we've done an initial print run of 15,000 copies of the booklet and we're expecting that there'll be pretty high demand for this booklet. So you know, if, if those, those booklets get used up, then we'll potentially look at reordering. And luckily we have a, a print sponsor that has come aboard to help with the cost of printing. And they're a company called Burke, and they're based in Edmonton, and they've uh, really helped out a lot as well with the printing of that booklet. So everybody's sharing and uh, shouldering the cost of this and getting it out to seniors and working with a lot of seniors organizations right across the province to get this booklet into the hands of seniors so that it can do some good. And where all can seniors find information about this resource online in case they wanted to know more about it and where they can access it? Sure. Uh, the website is findingbalancealberta.ca. And on that website, individuals can both order it or they can also actually just view it online or download a PDF as well. So if they're individuals that are more internet savvy, they can actually just re reference the materials online. Those that aren't or those that would like to order 
the booklet for perhaps if they have a parent or a friend or a peer that they would like to order the booklet for and pass it on to them, they can do that via that website. Perfect. And is there anything else you want to add for seniors to know about just concerning this new Keeping Well resource booklet? Seniors have a lot of a lot of health challenges and seniors deserve to uh, live a, a life of wellness. And, uh, you know, we talk about the retirement years and we want to make sure that seniors have the highest quality of life that they can have. And this book is just really designed to help them do that. And, you know, again, it provides a lot of practical information and hopefully they get some value out of it to help them live their best lives. I think it's very good to see this positive initiative out there for seniors in Alberta, especially coming out of this pandemic. Thank you so much for joining us again today, Brian. Thank you very much, Shelby. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us on Primetime Local News. Have a great rest of your night.